deal. Now let's look at the next stage of the game, which is going to be actually breaking the leg. Okay? So we've been looking at from a 50-50 using a strategy of getting our foot on his stomach so that we're able to climb on top, gain hip height, and now we can adjust the relationship of my hips with his primary leg and gain the heel by pointing my hips to the front of his leg. Okay? So from here, let's start to look at how can we put ourselves in a position to actually effectively break his leg. Okay? Now, the trick is you're not, you're not really going to do it here. Okay? Putting your hips to face the front of his knee is extremely good for the task of gaining heel exposure, but it's very bad for actually finishing a heel. Okay? There's two main types of heel breaking mechanics, and neither of them is available to you when your hips are facing into the front of his knee. That's what we want when we want to expose the heel, but the next step, breaking, this is not what we want. Okay? So we're going to have to rotate back this way. We don't want to just rotate without control. Because if we do that, what can happen is he can, uh, Carlin can extend his leg. He can, yep, he, exactly. This, he, he, very good. He can grab my uh, ankles. He can open up my wedges. All sorts of bad things can happen. Okay? So what we want to do from this position, the first thing I want you to do is the grip we're going to make is not a wrist watch grip. You, you don't want your wrist facing into your, uh, your chin. Grab like so, cup it, like a, we call this a false grip or a football grip. Let me see, we go here. Now the next thing we want to do is, as I come up to my head, right, my forehead is, is resting on the mat, my left hand goes to his knee. See how I grab at the back of his knee? Now when I roll back, I want to crunch my body in, so I drive my right elbow to my hip, and I crunch my body in, and I don't collapse to my shoulder. If I collapse to my shoulder, he has a pretty good opportunity to extend this leg, and now it's gonna, he could potentially free his knee from my knee line. Even if he doesn't do that with the leg extended, it's gonna be harder to like effectively employ breaking mechanics. We want, we ideally want a bend in this leg to break it, okay? So you wanna make sure when you land, you get a nice crunch into the, his leg, and you, you have a false grip, and you have a grip at the knee, okay? What this is gonna enable you to do is land in this type of a position here, okay? Where I have both my feet on his hip, and his leg is bent, all right? Let's talk about actually breaking it now. So, um, the two main types of breaking mechanics are going to be lateral breaking mechanics, where the main sign that you're employing lateral breaking mechanics is that your hips face into the side of the knee. Okay, when my hips face into the side of the knee, I'm going to do this really light, don't worry. When my hips face into the side of the knee, I can now take the inside of this thigh and compress at the top of his thigh, putting pressure there. That, in conjunction with the heel being drawn over my far shoulder will create lateral breaking mechanics. Okay? The second main type of breaking mechanics are rotational breaking mechanics, where instead of my hips facing into the side of the knee, they now face into the back of the knee. Okay, see how they face into the back of the knee? That's going to enable me to bridge up, and now instead of drawing the heel just over my far shoulder, I draw it over my far shoulder, and also I draw my elbow into his hips. Okay, that makes sense, guys. So type one is lateral, where my hips face into the side. Type two is rotational, where my hips face into the back. Okay, there's, there's advantages and disadvantages to both. Okay, the common feature that I want you guys to start off with is, is this grip at the knee and this false grip. Because we want to make sure that when we get into a position to start using either of these types of breaking mechanics, he doesn't have an opportunity to, to slip. Okay, so. Um, how do you know which of these you want to choose? Well, a lot of it's going to be based on how he's defending, okay? So there's three main things he can do to defend and inhibit my ability to, to break his leg. Okay, the first thing he can do is he can come towards me. Okay, if he can come towards me, he can hand fight and make things very difficult for me when I go to finish this piece <coughs> and I kill him. Okay, so what we want to do is make sure we have our legs in some kind of position to be able to push him away. Right, and obviously there's a lot of options for this, but that, that's just the first basic requirement we have to fulfill. Okay, the next thing we have to do is we have to make it difficult for him to lift that far hip. Okay, here you'll notice I'm, I'm in an outside sinkaku and I'm, I'm in a position to use lateral breaking mechanics. Um, one of the big problems, one of the big weaknesses of this position is when a guy is able to uh, put this foot flat on the mat and lift that far hip, you have very good he does this and you spin with him and he just keeps spinning and spinning and you can never get the finish. And you spin out of bounds and then the ref starts you back on the feet. No, no good. What you want to be able to do is you want to be able to do something to regulate the height of the far hip. So uh, 
this is, we call this the opposite hibashi, uh, go to lift that far hip. So he goes to lift the far hip, it's hard for him to step on it, and I can actually effectively break it. The next thing we're going to look at, with the next defensive uh, reaction he can employ, is he can take this knee, put it inside. Anytime he can get a grip of my legs, open up the wedges, and get his knee inside, now it's very hard to actually finish it. Okay? It's not impossible, but it's, it's, it's really, really tough. What he can do here is hold my ankle, now extend this leg. Yep, that's okay, you're right. <laughs> Put this knee out of the mat. Yep, and he can pull that out and be like, damn, I lost everything. Okay, so that's tough. So, all right, so now we have a baseline of the three main things we're trying to inhibit as we go to actually break him, okay? Let's start off by, we're gonna practice a lateral break where I'm here, I compress my left leg at the top of the thigh. You could, if, if you want to be extra safe, put your hand on the mat, draw your elbow into your hip, and then pull this over the far shoulder, okay? And you get a strong lateral break. Now what's gonna happen is, okay, I'm in a great position to stop him from coming towards me, right? Because my foot, right foot's on his stomach, my left foot covers my right foot, but I'm not in a great position to stop him from uh, raising the far hip and rotating. So when I feel this, I'm gonna extend my other leg, put this leg on top, my right leg that is, I start with the ankle and then I step. Okay, now we just went from an outside sakaku to an opposite hip wash. From here, I can bridge up, I draw the heel over my far shoulder, and I draw my elbow into his hips. Try not to have your shoulders, um, you don't want to have your shoulders straight, you're bleeding pressure here, you want to have everything moving as one unit, right? So you want to crunch towards him like so. Make sense, guys? This, and then you draw it. Okay, now, the next thing we have to deal with is when he gets, it starts to open up our legs, right? So this position is really strong for stopping the height of the far hip, and it's also very good for keeping him away from me because I can, I can push off his foot. The weakness is gonna be, look at the space here. Yeah, so that's a problem. So what do we do when we start to see that sort of thing happen? What I want you to do is take this right leg, throw it over the top. Okay, now we, uh, and we point the knee down to the back. Now when he goes to get that knee inside, he's never able to, there's just no space. Okay, because at the same time as he's doing that, I'm breaking it with, uh, in this case again, it's lateral breaking packs. How can you tell because my hips fits into the side? So what that means is here, I curl, I remember the lateral, we want to bring elbow to our hip, we bridge it to the side, and we draw over the far shoulder. Does that make sense, guys? So because here what's happening is, I'm putting pressure on top of the side, I go all the far shoulder, and that creates the break. So again, from the, from the top, we're here. We put ourselves into a situation where we're easily able to gain heel exposure because my hips face into the front of his knee. Okay? Now, from here, I'm going to rotate to a position where I can actually break him, but I've got to make sure that as I make this rotation, I, I, uh, I put everything in order to actually finish the heel hook. So I roll, I grab the back of the knee with my left hand, and I want to do a crunch inward. Okay? And I've got a false grip here with my right hand. The reason why I start with the false grip is this is less likely to slip. Do you guys see what I mean when I say false grip like this? As if I'm grabbing a football and, and hugging into my chest. Okay? If I grip like this, this is ultimately going to be much better for finishing the heel hook. But the weakness is it's a little bit looser. This is the thinner part of my forearm, right? This is the fatter part. The fatter part of my forearm does a better job of just holding it. Now, if I want to finish him, that's, that's not ideal. I want this. So it's easier to draw this into my chin. Uh, but if I'm just trying to stop him from slipping, which is obviously our first goal, I prefer this false grip. Okay? Make sense, guys? Second thing is gripping at the knee. Okay? We don't want to get too eager to just start thinking about finishing. Okay? Sometimes you'll get people that will, you know, turn, extend, and start to create problems for you. All right? So, ideally, you start off with a good, solid grip at the knee, and you hold here. Okay, so you've got everything nice and tight. It's hard for him to start using any of those defensive strategies we looked at. Okay, now we're going to go into uh, a set of breaking mechanics. The first one is lateral breaking mechanics from outside Tinkaku. Remember guys, lateral breaking mechanics are characterized by my hips facing into the side of the knee. I compress the top of my, th uh, sorry, the inside of my thigh to the top of his thigh. <clears throat> my right elbow comes into my hips, and I draw the heel over my far shoulder. Okay? Um, Let's be nice to each other, practice it with one hand first. The truth is, guys, also, if you can't do it with one hand, like gently like this, you're probably not really doing it correctly yet. So, you know, it's, you're not really compromising 
your technique too much by being extra safe too. Okay? Now the next thing we're going to look at is the direction of force of my left leg is not really doing an amazing job of stopping his far hip from rising. Okay? It's doing it, what, what it's doing here is it's, it's enabling me to bridge in and employ lateral braking mechanics, but it's not, it's not doing much to regulate that. So as I see that, what I do is I switch my legs, I start with a curl with my right leg and ankle over the top of the hip, and I switch to a foot on top of the hip. You know, I step down, and I have an opposite hip option. Okay? Now here, the rotational break, typically people find rotational breaks, I think, a bit easier. They're, they're a little less subtle. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bridge in, I step down with my right foot, and I draw my uh, right elbow into his hips as I draw my right wrist over my far shoulder. Okay, I'm not actually doing it because I don't want to hurt the bar line, but yeah, that's what you would do. You're here, you bridge, draw up and over. Make sense, guys? Now the next thing, pretty much the last thing he might try to do is open up the wedges. If he gets this, he actually has a pretty decent shot of getting out. So we want to prevent this from happening. The second I feel that, I've got to make sure that this space here that he's going to try to exploit vanishes. So I just take my right leg, I go back over, and I go like this. Okay, now we go. So we started off, so guys, lateral, rotational, we're going back to lateral, but now with, in, a, in a different position, right? So we got lateral, we're going rotational, okay, and then we're going lateral again. So we're, we're, we're constantly cycling between different positions to accommodate the different possible defensive considerations we're going to have to deal with, okay? Um, you know, the reality of it is, is none of these positions is perfectly suited to stop every single thing he might do defensively, right? So if I go here, right, and I don't get the break, what do, what do you guys think might happen? Well, I'm back in a situation where I can't really stop the far hip from rising, right? Yeah, he might do that, and I have to step back on the far hip. And then he goes back to that, and I go, I go back to this. And you keep going back and forth until either he gets out or you break his leg, right? That's ultimately what it's going to come down to. It's a race. He wants to relieve pressure and then remove himself from the situation. I want to sustain pressure over time so that's that I'm capable of breaking his leg and, uh, you know, I win the match. Okay? Make sense, guys? All right, let's get started. One, two, three. What more can I say? I wouldn't be here today if the old school didn't pave your way. Ain't nothing like the old school. What more can I say? I wouldn't be here today if the old school. I remember Mr. Magic Flash, Grandmaster Castle, L.L. raising hell, but I didn't last ever be a rock gym was. The shit to me, I flipped to see a Dougie Fresh show with Ricky D and Red Alert was putting in work. And Chuck Deal had my homies on the hill getting ill when shit was real. What I can still remember raw with that game when Daylight Soul was putting pot holes in the game. I can't explain how it was. Houdini had me puffing on that Buddha getting buzzed. Cause still I was. Them block parties in the projects and on my block. If you don't stop sipping on that pop side, and through my speaker, Queen Latifah and Lucy Light, listen to Tracy KRS to get me through. Tonight, with Tiller Rockin' Man trying to exist the sign If remember what shit was the bond shit, nothing like the old what school What more can I say? I wouldn't be here today If the old school didn't pay me away like What more school. can I say? I wouldn't be